Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So um, this is my take on the December 2024 astrology. Holiday season is upon us. So there's a number of things that are happening here this month. The first one is we kick off right on the 1st of December. Um, we have our new moon. And um, the thing about this new moon is I, I left it to this video to do this, but on the Pacific Coast, this particular moon uh, was actually um, on the 30th of November. But everywhere else, pretty much in the world, it would be the next day, which is the 1st of December. And in particular, I wanted to talk about this new moon uh, in relation to a square that's happening. I'll talk about that in a minute. So the new moon has the moon and the sun together, and it is at nine degrees of Sagittarius, 33 minutes. And uh, it is at 10.21 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the 30th of November. Um, but then all others, including, let's just say, the East Coast, it's on the 1st of December at 1.21 a.m. So this is like your new year, Sagittarius. I'm a Sagittarian by um, sun sign. So this is my new start too. Yeah. And um, I talked about the square. The square that I'm talking about here is a, uh, a moon uh, as well as Saturn. So it's a moon Saturn square. And this actually happens on the 1st of December at 4, uh, 4.48 a.m. And what's interesting about this is that this square sets in to the newness that you want to have happen in your life at the new moon. Hours later, you're having to make some adjustments of some sort, right? That square asks you to adjust. Um, when we look at Saturn, it can put a, a delay on things. It can put a damper on things. Um, it can sometimes bring difficulties too. Um, and it could bring difficulties if we take it out to the larger world with the people. So it's like the people have to make an adjustment here is what this speaks to, right? But in your own personal life, um, it could just have difficulties, um, uh, emotional difficulties, perhaps with women. The, the moon can represent um, the female in some ways as well, right? Or at least the, the mother. So you may literally have um, maybe an argument or a disagreement with your mother. That could just play out just like that, right? But they are both in, um, well, the, the moon is in Sagittarius. And then, of course, Saturn is in um, Pisces. And the degrees we're talking about are about 13, 14 degrees for this to have any real effect on you, right? Um, now, the new moon uh, is going to have Venus trining Uranus. That's very positive. That's like exciting um, excitement in your love life potential. Um, maybe for others, some unexpected money coming their way, that type of thing, right? And we do have Mercury is still retrograde at this uh, new moon on the 1st of December. Um, and it is opposing um, Jupiter, which is also retrograde. So this speaks to um, maybe things not being so clear or um, Again, this whole disagreement type thing with the opposition, you can have literally opposing forces here. And Mercury really speaks to things like communications. It can even be our thoughts as well, right? The news. And this could bring news uh, with regards to what? Maybe foreign people, foreign things. Maybe some issues regarding travel for some reason as well. Jupiter can represent that too. Jupiter can also represent the law. Um, and so on this sort of mundane level, it could have um, you know, things like legal issues going on in many ways behind the scenes, kind of like negotiations, because both these planets are retrograde at this time, right? And the ruler of this new moon, of course, is uh, Jupiter. So we want to watch where that is. So that may be a, a theme that comes up at this new moon in Sagittarius. Um, nicely, we have that Jupiter retrograde sextiling Chiron, um, which is also really nice too. 
So this, this suggests that there may be some healing of some sort going on here. And the healing may actually be going on in a foreign country or with foreign people, right? Jupiter can represent that too. Now, when we move on to the 6th and 7th of December, we have that Mars going retrograde. Now, I've already spoken about this in other videos at length. But here we're talking about this Mars retrograde is at 6 Leo, um, 9 minutes on the 6th, 7th of December. And this is going to be a long-lasting one. And the thing that stood out for me was, sure, this is retrograde is starting in Leo, but it's going to be spending most of its time in Cancer, right? And it will go direct in Cancer towards the last days of February, but then it still has to make its way through the shadow period, right? So this to me features the homeland, right? It features, um, when we're talking about cancer here, um, the mother, uh, mothering, right? That nurturing, that type of thing as well. Now I always say, with a Mars retrograde, one of the best ways to utilize the energy, because there's gonna be potentially frustrations, delays, can't move forward on things, um, have a plan A, B, and C for any projects that you're going. Now, I would say that this Mars retrograde is a great time to plan out some kind of, uh, say, project of some sort. Or maybe you've got to make some decisions or take some actions in your life. Well, this is a great time period to plan all those, not necessarily a time to move forward with them. So you can expect, expect some frustrations here but you can avoid some of those frustrations by realizing that you're probably going to have some kind of delays or frustrations come up regarding something that you want to take action on. When we go on here to the 15th, 16th of December, well, our Mercury is going to be going direct at that time. And uh, we're also going to have our next lunation, which is a full moon in Gemini. So Gemini is ruled by Mercury. So that fact that Mercury goes direct on the same day is important, right? So this means there's some a, a lot of chatter. That's what I, I got out of this. So there's two signs that are, are ruled by Mercury, Gemini and Virgo. But Gemini really deals with kind of a lot of information. And so this says to me news. So there's probably going to be a lot of news coming our way uh, regarding this full moon here. It's at 23 uh, degrees of Gemini, 53 minutes at 107 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, as I mentioned, it's on the 15th of December. And so, <coughs> almost 12 hours later, 12.57 p.m. Pacific Standard Time is when that Mercury will go direct. And it will go direct at six degrees of Sagittarius. Now that uh, Mercury will be trining uh, Mars at this time, right? See, remember Mars is still in Leo for the first little while of its start of its retrograde. And so that's very positive. Um, it can have you speaking your mind, right? Um, maybe successfully drawing up some plans. Maybe you do your Gantt chart or some kind of milestone type thing. Uh, you start that process around this time. It would be a great even though this is a full moon, that this uh, Mercury trine um, Mars is happening on, it still would be a good time to say, take a look at the big picture, right? Now, on that same day, but a little bit later, um, just by a few minutes or so at 101 p.m., that moon uh, will be at zero degrees of Cancer and it will be squaring the north nodes in uh, Aries at that time. So this is another piece of information that goes with this full moon uh, regarding a wrap up, a big spotlight put on something here. And again, we go back to this whole thing of cancer. And so I see this as um, potentially uh, women rising up and maybe even making statements because of course Mercury is going direct at this time, um, about, about their future, right? And it has a lot to do with anything cancer related. So our homeland, 
mothering and nurturing are all up here. And there's a clash that's going on, right? Um, the other nice thing that we have happening, again, we're having Mercury come in here on the stage. Mercury is going to be sextiling Venus. And um, we're looking here at the influence of Aquarius as a sign. And I really thought this might also be a time when uh, we, we get an opportunity to talk science. Um, that might be up to humanitarian things, uh, opportunities to put some humanitarian type uh, of activity um, discussions on the table could be. But we could actually literally just hear something uh, regarding some scientific breakthrough of some sort. On the 21st of December, we have our winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere. And this is at 1.21 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, the moon is going to be at 13 degrees of Virgo. Um, the moon will be opposite of Saturn. Yeah, so the moon opposite Saturn really speaks to, and I'm going to take this out to the mundane level, clashes with authorities. Um, it's authorities trying to squash the people. Uh, we ju have Jupiter squaring uh, Saturn at this time. And we have Venus uh, still sextiling Chiron. Um, so that whole Jupiter square Saturn. Now, Jupiter many times just gives positive energy. Um, but I really see this kind of dovetails into this whole other transit of the moon opposite uh, to Saturn. So I think there's going to be some rising up here of some sort. Now with the Jupiter, this could represent foreign people, foreign things, right? And so there may be some um, difficulties that go on uh, with authorities uh, in foreign lands with foreign people, that could be. And it can also be the law. So there may be some pushback with regards to the law here. Some laws are being put down that don't sit well with everybody. Yeah. And of course, we have um, Christmas around this time as well for many people. So then the 25th of December, we still have that Jupiter square to Saturn. And the degree point is around 14 degrees of Gemini and um, Pisces, respectively, right? So there may be some, um, some difficulties uh, going on here around Christmas time in foreign lands. There may also be difficulties with some travel of some sort for some reason, right? Um, this could tie in things that are like Pisces, which is the water, right? Maybe an excessive water of some sort. So when we go um, now into the 28th, of December, we have Mercury, which is going direct, uh, will be squaring Saturn as well. So we can see that Saturn kind of plays into this whole month. And so it really says to me, there's a lot of emphasis being put on the rules, the regulations, authority figures, that type of thing too, right? And so this is, you know, news that we don't want to hear or news that we don't agree with, with this square, right? And we end this month of December with a second new moon in Capricorn. So Capricorn, you've been having some story go on this year, right? So you had your first new moon on the 11th of January. You had a full moon on the 22nd of June this year. And now you're doing another new start with another new moon. Typically, you only get one new moon per sign in the year. So listen up, Capricorn, there's some story going on here. Go back to January and June and ask yourself what was activated around that time, what things came in for you, what people came in for you, because there's a whole new start here. And this is like right around um, New Year's, right? And so there may be, for some Capricorns, some real celebration going on here around that New Year's time period. So for it to have any effect, we're looking here at nine Capricorn 44 minutes right? It's on the 30th of December at 2.26 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Pluto is going to be sextiling the North Nodes, and the North Nodes are making its way out of Aries to go into Pisces, right? Remember that North Nodes go backwards um, mid-January. So to me, this is also an indication of opportunities for new start 
in our collective destiny here. Uh, Venus will be squaring Uranus. And Pluto, notably, will be opposing a Mars retrograde. Yeah, so this is um, also, I would say, an important thing to pay attention to. So this is transformation, right? Um, difficulties with transforming um, and taking action. So with that Mars retrograde, it's like being held back here. So that transformation, for some reason, is being held back. Um, the ruler of this moon, of course, is Saturn. And when we look at Saturn, Saturn is direct at this time at 14 degrees of Pisces. And it's got a wide square with Mercury at 18 Sagittarius, but it is fairly wide. But I did want to take a look at that ruler. Um, so this also indicates, you know, um, difficulties with accepting, um, you know, information that's coming from authorities. Yeah, but that Pluto opposing Mars. Now that can, this also can indicate the more mm, negative sides of Pluto coupled with a retrograde Mars. This is, um, you know, planning behind the scenes, maybe even nefarious type activities behind the scenes with that setup of Pluto opposing Mars. But maybe for us individually, the transformation that we want to, to take or make before the new year starts um, is somehow hampered in some way, right? I say just have a lot of patience um, around this new moon. Uh, towards the 30th of December. And certainly if you are going out um, to parties or whatever, um, take your time to, you know, check all your details out. Don't speed. <laughs> That's probably one. You don't do anything against the law, that sort of thing, uh, or authorities, right? But I wish everybody the best over this holiday season. Enjoy yourself. Try to take it easy as best you can. And hey, let's look forward to those new starts, right? at that new moon towards the end of this year. Now, when we look at uh, January 2025, can you believe it? Yeah. We have a full moon at 23 of Cancer. We're going to have a new moon at 9 of Pisces. Uh, Uranus will go direct, which will be good news. Um, that's going to kind of push things forward in a, a positive way. Uh, Mars is still going to be uh, retrograde but it will be now in uh, Cancer, right? And then, of course, the Sun um, will conjunct Pluto in January too, right? So that'll be a, an Aquarius uh, thing. So that, that to me says, um, you know, this, this can be somebody um, important in the world bringing transformation our way when we have the Sun conjunct Pluto, right? especially in Aquarius, exciting new things potentially happening starting in January. But I will cover all that later for you. All right, everybody, I'm going to move on now to do the individual sun signs and or ascendants, whichever one resonates with you. I suggest that you probably uh, watch or for my Spotify listeners, listen to um, start with your ascendant. That'll give you the areas of life that all these different moons that I spoke about this month of December are landing. And then look at your sun sign, listen to your sun sign, watch your sun sign to just get a little bit more information because your sun is the most important thing in your chart. So Gemini, that new moon in Sagittarius, of course, is opposite to you. So there's going to be some new starts for some Geminis with regards to your partner whether it's a marriage partner, a business partner, or even clients. And um, let's just say it is clients. You could be drawing in some foreign element here. Maybe some Geminis will be reaching out to foreign lands um, in terms of what they're doing. Working with people, forming partnerships. That's the new start here. But it can also involve a focus on your partner, Gemini where your partner maybe has something uh, that they want to tell you with regards to um, maybe some 
future project they're working on. Sagittarius can represent the future, right? For others, you may be just having a new start here with regards to putting a business partnerships together. Maybe this is you signing off on some of the um, contracts and that, right? But don't forget that we do have a Mercury retrograde going on at the new moon on the 1st of December, right? And hey, the big thing for you in 2025 is going to be Uranus going into your sign. So lots of big change ahead for Gemini starting in 2025. I'll talk about my forecast for 2025 shortly. I've almost got um, all the details sorted out. But, um, stay tuned for that one. Yeah, and so right now, though, positively, Gemini, you have Jupiter in your sign. Jupiter is like Father Christmas. He just wants to bring you presents, wants to bring you benefits. Now, the benefits can come in forms certainly of literally gifts and money, but it can also come in the form of a person. So this could be um, a mentor. It could be an advisor. It can also be a time when you become an advisor or mentor as well. Jupiter stays in a sign for approximately a year. So it's going to continue in your sign through June uh, 2025. So take advantage of that, right? When we look at that full moon in Gemini, well, Gemini, that is you. So it's your first house. The positive thing is on that 15th of December, when we have the full moon in your sign is Mercury, your ruler, will be going direct the same day. Super positive. So maybe some frustrations that you may have been going through, maybe with regards to anything to do with communications, that's contracts, writing, etc. You get the green light here with the Mercury, your ruler, going direct at that full moon. You wrap up. This, to me, says wrapping up a writing project, wrapping up a contract that maybe you've been negotiating uh, a long time on, right? Um, maybe a sales or commerce initiative is wrapped up at this time, either wrapped up in terms of you sign off on the contracts or you decide you don't want to work in that anymore or do that particular activity anymore. Other things that can happen... Uh, with Gemini are short distance travel. So you may end up stopping travel of some sort that is a short distance travel. And um, that's one of the activities that can happen at the full moon. When we look at that new moon in Capricorn, well, that's your eighth house. So here are new starts with regards to investments, shared resources, um, yeah, I mean, you could decide to take a really hard look at all your investments and finances that you have, your 401ks, and make some kind of new initiative here. And maybe you'll work with an advisor of some sort to do that, someone who knows the rules and regulations. I mean, that new moon in Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, right? And Saturn tends to speak to authorities, um, people who know the rules and regulations, that type of thing. I mean, it's possible there might be some Geminis that decide they want to retire. And that new start in the eighth house is you accessing all your funds to allow you to retire. That would be a great way to use the new moon, too. For others, uh, you may have a new start in your sex life, and it may involve an older person. Capricorn, ruled by Saturn, can be an older person here, right? This also could be a new start with regards to taking on some psychological therapy um, and having an expert help you out. If that's something up to you, this would be a great new start to do that. So that's on the 30th of December, right? Whatever it is, um, Gemini, this was a, a sort of a story that started in January, did some kind of culmination in June, and then ushered in this new start for you in your eighth house, right? It's also secrets, so there may have been a process of maybe um, things coming to light for you that were hidden before, um, that wrap up here uh, manifesting as a new start for you with regards to resources. I mean, something as simple as um, you not realizing maybe you had shares or something like that in one of the companies that you worked in. Um, that comes to light, you get sent a letter where there's, this is the fifth time they're sending it to you saying, you've got to cash in these shares. 
uh, from the previous company. I actually had this happen to me once. <laughs> Um, so that, that can, it's just a lot of things that uh, the eighth house represents, right? But it's a new start and I really like it. Take care of yourself, Gemini. All right, everybody. I'm wishing everyone a very happy holiday season, whatever it is that you do or celebrate. Please enjoy yourself and um, look forward to next year. Um, I'm optimistic as per usual with my Sagittarian son. Um, I'm sending everybody a lot of love and... Um, I'm thinking seasons greetings is what I want to say, but um, take it easy over this month of December. We've got a lot happening. There's a lot of um, toing and froing. Um, enjoy yourself and have a lot of patience, <laughs> um, but make sure to enjoy yourself and spread the love is what I've got to say. Bye for now, everybody, and happy new year. So I just want to give a shout out to um, some of my clients as well as viewers uh, that are local to me in San Diego that came to support me when I gave my lecture in September at the San Diego Astrological Society. I just want to thank you so much for coming down. Um, you'll see their pictures here, um, but I just wanted to give them a nice shout out and um, happy holidays to all of you. I am going to be giving another lecture September 2025. I'll give you all the details well in advance. Um, so plan to come and see me again. Happy holidays to all of you and thanks again.